The most infamous Sydney criminal who ever wore a badge. The man nicknamed Roger the Dodger. Roger Rogerson. Roger Rogerson. Roger Rogerson is an evil man. His is one of the most notorious names in the history of Australian law enforcement. Roger Rogerson, also known as Roger the Dodger. The former police officer and detective worked at some of the nation's most high-profile cases over almost three decades. He was decorated for it too. He racked up a dozen commendations in his time, including the prestigious Peter Mitchell Award for arresting an escaped armed robber in 1980. Rogerson was looking likely to become the New South Wales Police Commissioner when, just a year later, it all came undone, starting with the 1981 shooting of a Sydney drug dealer and standover man. This is Chippendale, a suburb of Sydney, and it was here on a Saturday afternoon in winter last year that Warren Lanfranchi came to meet a senior policeman. Lanfranchi died somewhere along here in this ill-begotten lane called Dangar Place. Rogerson said he fired at Lanfranchi in self-defence. But Lanfranchi's girlfriend, 26-year-old sex worker Sally Ann Huckstep, would later allege Rogerson had more sinister motivations. She said he had ties to the notorious underworld figure Nettie Smith and that Rogerson fired the fatal shot in cold blood. Rogerson denied Huckstep's claims at an inquiry into Lanfranchi's death, saying Nettie Smith had arranged the fateful meeting so Lanfranchi could give himself up to cops, who were on his tail for a spate of bank robberies. A jury found Rogerson shot Lanfranchi while, quote, endeavouring to effect an arrest, but they stopped short of saying he was acting in self-defence or in line with his duty as a police officer. Sally Ann became the overnight sensation who upstaged the star cop. The media lapped up every detail as she gave her version of what happened that day. But Sally Ann Huckstep's story was riddled with lies, like her claim that she was pregnant with Len Franchi's child when he died. Five years later, her body would be found floating in a pond in Sydney's Centennial Park. Her murder has never been solved, but her story, fictitious or otherwise, irrevocably tarnished Rogerson's once stellar reputation and exposed deep corruption within New South Wales public institutions. In time, Sally Ann Huckstep's allegations wouldn't seem so far-fetched. Rogerson was booted from the force in 1986 and later imprisoned for perverting the course of justice. He was handed a life sentence in 2016 for the murder of another drug dealer, student Jamie Gow. 20-year-old Gow was shot and killed inside a storage unit in 2014. His body was dumped at sea. Both Rogerson and McNamara blamed each other, giving very different versions of events while giving evidence. Rogerson's co-accused at that trial, former detective Glenn McNamara, alleged that Rogerson had been wreaking havoc in Sydney's underworld for more than 30 years. McNamara said Rogerson told him that he not only murdered Len Franchi, but that he played a role in the killing of Sally Ann Huckstep, but he wasn't allowed to tell that to the jury at trial. McNamara also alleged Rogerson admitted to being involved in an assassination plot against undercover cop Michael Drury, and that he'd killed the hitman hired for the job, Christopher Flannery, known in the 80s as Mr. Rentakill. It's a tangled old web. Well, Michael Drury, there's no other way to put this, was one of the good guys. Matthew Condon is a senior reporter with The Australian. Uh, He joined the force for all the right reasons. He considered it a privilege to swear the oath and defend the people of New South Wales. He's 31, raising a a family with very small children, living with his wife in Chatswood. He had previously gone undercover as a drug squad operative and there were major drug charges uh, levelled against a Melbourne criminal there was an attempt by the Melbourne criminal to organise to bribe Drury in order to make these charges either dilute or completely go away. Drury flatly rejected the bribe and the decision was made by this Melbourne criminal that Mr Drury should be killed. And so the idea was that Roger Rogerson, as a serving police officer and a colleague to Michael Drury, would organise the murder of Michael Drury. Now, the story is still unclear in terms of who did what, but the story goes that Rogerson enlisted Christopher Dale Flannery to murder Drury. 
And on that night in 1984, Drury was shot twice. He lost 20 litres of blood. He should not have survived that attack. As it turned out, ultimately, the Victorian criminal pleaded guilty to organising the attempted assassination. Roger Rogerson pleaded not guilty to his role in the attempted murder. In 1989, Rogerson was charged with conspiracy to commit murder over the attack on Drury, but was sensationally acquitted. An internal investigation ensued into Rogerson and, according to Drury and others, the reality is that that investigation was entirely compromised to protect Roger Rogerson and allow him to go forward and commit further atrocities. In yet another twist in this decades-long saga, the hitman Chris Flannery vanished in the mid-80s. His murder has never been solved either. But Flannery's wife Kathleen told cold case detectives that she'd been offered $50,000 by Rogerson to, quote, atone for the loss of her husband. If she and Glenn McNamara are to be believed, Rogerson was the likely culprit. Kathleen Flannery now lives on the Gold Coast and has moved on with her life. She's an extraordinary person, vibrant, entertaining, positive. But when I asked her who she thought had murdered her husband, she just said one word, Roger. Perhaps, you know, time tempers all. She wasn't aggressive about it. She wasn't sarcastic about it. Just said, look, the position of the family is that he is dying precisely where he should be dying, and that is in prison. He is where he belongs, essentially, and he'll die where he belongs. That's their justice. Coming up after the break, why Roger Rogerson's demise doesn't necessarily herald the end of corruption in law enforcement. Once a feared killer and crooked cop, Roger Rogerson died overnight at the Prince of Wales Hospital in Randwick, where he was receiving end-of-life care. The 83-year-old corrupt officer was admitted to the Prince of Wales Hospital in Sydney on Thursday after suffering a brain aneurysm in his prison cell. The hospital is just a stone's throw from Sydney's notorious Long Bay Prison, where the 83-year-old has been serving a life sentence for the 2014 murder of drug dealer Jamie Gow. He was still appealing that conviction as recently as last year. Of all the endings Rogerson envisioned, or perhaps feared, over the course of his criminal career, this is surely the most anticlimactic. Here's Matt Condon again. What it sheds light on and relief on, but not enough, because his death means he will take those secrets to his grave, unfortunately. There would be many, many outstanding murders, at the very least, that with his cooperation, could have been put to rest and history could have been corrected. It is the case, and I don't hesitate to describe him as thus because he's been described by former colleagues and others as a true psychopath, that we will lose the ability to lay down history as it happened. This is a great loss. I'm not saying he, he is necessarily a great loss, but what he possesses in his memory bank, what is in his mind, how he lived his life, what he did, the loss of that is a very big loss critically to history. It prevents to a lot of people, a lot of victims from gaining some form of solace or justice. The tale of his carnage is very long and his death will not resolve that. The question of Rogerson's legacy is one that Michael Drury has often pondered. The former drug squad detective survived an attempt on his life, either arranged or carried out by Rogerson himself in 1984. It's impacted Michael his entire life. He's still an incredible person, upbeat, funny, loyal, generous, an absolute pillar of his community, despite everything that's happened to him. It's the measure of the man. The first thing he said was, I pray that he's not in pain for the sake of his family, for his wife and children. In a way, the tragedy of this situation is that Drury has in fact learnt more about the attempted assassination over time, over decades. Mick Drury had an idea that he would 
at some point this year sit down in person with Rogerson and discuss Rogerson's life and his criminal career and see if the two of them couldn't start to correct a bit of history. And unfortunately, that may never happen. The corruption in which Roger Rogerson was ensnared has long tentacles that stretch across space and time. Whenever you research true crime in this country, you can go right back to the 1960s and at some point onward, Roger Caleb Rogerson emerges like a phantom out of nowhere. He just appears and then you have to work out and deconstruct why is he there? You have to be suspicious. There must be an, or might be an ulterior motive because if Rogerson's here, there's a reason for it. I've spoken to officers who knew him when he was a young up and coming officer in the 70s and put that very question to them. Could another Roger Rogerson emerge from the marshlands, from the swamp, and insinuate himself or herself indeed upon law enforcement in this country. And they said, as the odds may be huge that that won't happen, you cannot discard that. In fact, someone may come along who decides that what is most important is power and is reputation. It doesn't just enter fantasy now because Roger Rogerson is on the way out. Matthew Condon is a senior reporter with The Australian. You can read that story, as well as all the nation's best news, sport, politics and business, right now at theaustralian.com.au.